Today we've got a great malicious compliance involving a fake vegetarian on a flight. We'll get into that in a bit, but first... Oh, I'm on private property? I used to work for a supermarket chain, and quite often I'd be asked by management to work at other locations. Most of the time, this wasn't a big deal. I was happy to help out. It gave me an excuse to drive and have the petrol paid for. However, one day, I was asked to work at a location very far away at a very early hour of the morning. I initially refused on the grounds that I would have to wake up at around 2 a.m. in order to have a shower, breakfast, and drive to be on site for 5 a.m. After some arm bending from management, I finally relented and begrudgingly agreed I would do it. Due to the drive not taking nearly as long as I initially expected, I arrived on location at around 4.30 a.m. I waited in my car with the music playing. At 4.50 a.m., I get a loud knock on the car window, nearly making me jump out of my skin. It was the manager for that store, who, never seeing me before, did not know who I was. The conversation went as follows. The manager said, You need to leave. This is private property. I said, Oh, but... The manager interrupting said, I don't care. Go. Now. Me, quickly realizing I can play this to my advantage, said, Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't want any problems. Of course, I'll go right away. Sorry. And as per his request, I drove home with a smile on my face, knowing that I have the rest of the day free to myself. A few hours later, I get a phone call. I answer the unrecognized number, and I recognize the voice immediately. It was the manager who told me to leave. The manager said, Hello, I'm looking for OP. I say, Hi, yeah, that's me. They say, This is manager name calling from location. I was expecting you to work with me today. You should have been here for 5 a.m. Me, trying to sound casual, said, Yeah, I was there waiting in my car. You told me to leave, remember? They reply, But you didn't say th- Me, interrupting, said, There are no ifs or buts. I was on private property and was asked to leave. I was legally obliged to do so. They say, right, but don't you think... Me, interrupting. It doesn't matter what I thought. I was asked to leave private property. I'm not going to break the law and risk getting in trouble with the police. It was at this point that he hung up on me. I expected to get in trouble for what had happened, but I never heard anything more about it. This was a few years back now, too. It's one of my favorite stories to tell. I hope you enjoyed it. I just wonder what must have been seemingly off about OP that made this guy assume that they couldn't possibly have been that person. Was it just OP was there way too early? Is that enough to be like, oh, this can't possibly be the guy that's showing up within half an hour of this time? Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is the old bait and switch. Once upon a time, I, like many people after the new year, joined Planet Fitness with my girlfriend, now wife. We did not go to the gym, and this continued now that we had a gym membership. After a year or so had gone by of not going to the gym, we decided to go in one day just for something to do. They wouldn't let us in due to the card that we used for my wife's membership being expired and our account was due over $100. They agreed that we could go in as long as we got it under $100. We paid the remaining amount and cancelled her membership, switching mine to a premium membership so that we could both get on using mine. After probably another year of them collecting my money for little in return, I joined the army as a way to escape the ever-rising cost of family health insurance. I thought, this is great, now I have a reason to work out and I'll use my Planet Fitness Premium Membership that lets me use any of their gyms around the country. However, upon moving to our first duty station, I found that 1. I worked out every morning with a group of people outside. 2. There are several gyms on base, usually nicer than a Planet Fitness, so I went to cancel my membership. Here's where they really ticked me off. Oh, you have to cancel in person at your home gym or by writing a cancellation letter via first-class mail to your home gym. The problem being that my home gym was over 700 miles away, and I didn't want to wait long enough for them to get the letter and process it. I left and began my Planet Fitness contract research. Armed with knowledge, I returned to the closest store the next day. Good morning, sir. They said, oh, good morning. Can you help me out? I don't necessarily want to pay for the black membership anymore, but my home gym is in Ohio. Can I change my home gym to this location? Of course, sir. I'd be happy to assist you. 
Once all the changing of information had been completed, I dropped the bomb. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes, actually. Since this is my home gym now, I'd like to go ahead and cancel my membership. Her jaw actually dropped. She called the manager to give the overrides or whatever he needed to do. He got the whole story, looked at me and said that I would have to wait 24 hours since I just changed my home gym. I obliged his request and came back the next day. I'm happy to say that it's been almost five years since my last gym membership. I mean, I guess you don't really have much of a choice if it's the only gym near you, but I don't understand how gyms with such predatory practices continue to thrive. Because, like, I've always heard stories of people who buy a gym membership and then, like, you have to physically bring them your firstborn delivered on a silver platter to convince them to cancel it somehow. It's at the point where if I get a gym membership, I might as well just sign up with a throwaway credit card. Our next story is, you want a phone call every time? We'll do. I worked for a petty, fragile man years ago. He loved to micromanage and was always wanting to know if I talked to anyone higher in management than he was. This by itself wasn't a problem. As I understand chains of command and follow them, the crux of the issue was he had to know every detail of every conversation, and he wanted to dictate what they were told when they reached out to us. I was in a unique situation because I have specialized education, which was very useful to top management. Because of this, they called me directly, frequently, every day of the week and at all hours. The baby boss had a huge problem with this, because he wanted to control the technical information that I provided the big boss when he called with questions. I tried my best to loop baby boss in when these calls occurred, but big boss wanted me to speak freely and didn't want to wait for someone else to get on the call. Often baby boss would call big boss after we spoke to try and take credit for what I told them, even though it was well known that he didn't have the same education or understanding that I did. Baby boss then demanded I call him every time Big Boss called me and wanted a full recounting of our conversations. Cue malicious compliance. I followed his direction to a T. If Big Boss called me at 2 a.m. with a question, Baby Boss got a call at 2.15. But with a rambling retelling of our conversation, which often exceeded the length of the first call. After a few weeks, Baby Boss got tired, literally, of being woken up at all hours. He then demanded that I send him an email after every call with every detail. So I did that. I created these emails that would rival a high schooler who had an assignment with a minimum word count. I'd sprinkle the important information in between long, flowing sentences, so he was forced to read the whole thing if he wanted to know what I really spoke about. This ultimately resulted in Baby Boss relenting and just asking for a brief recap in person during the next business day. Soon after, the budget people were very concerned about why I had huge amounts of overtime at odd hours, and I explained the direction I was given. Baby Boss was eventually disciplined and was forced out, due in large part because of everything that happened with me. Now, my question is, when OP gets calls at 2am from the Big Boss... I'm assuming they probably get paid for that, right? They're getting like some kind of on-call hours. My question is, when they're sitting there typing these intricate but also extremely tiring, boring, and unnecessarily long emails to update Baby Boss, are they still getting paid for all that time spent? Or is OP getting paid enough just enjoying their malicious compliance? Our next story is, deal with it or find a new job? Easier than you think, bub. As a young adult, I decided to move several hundred miles away on a whim without a new job lined up. Fortunately, the relatives I was living with knew a ton of people in the small town and were able to get me a job within a week at the local grocery store. I was to be a courtesy clerk, bagging groceries and stocking shelves. Immediately, I made friends with co-workers and some of the customers weren't too bad either. However, management was a different deal. Like the HR manager who would waste a customer's time telling them recipes for the items they have and holding up the line. She would also call me from the back of the store to bag two items and help the man barely older than me to his car despite him protesting. There was also John, the general manager. John would be nice in groups, but if he got you alone, his true colors would show. He once berated me for having a 5 o'clock shadow even though I shaved right before work. 
My hair is dark and grows quickly. Sorry, dude, can't help nature. After a few months, the night janitor, technically early morning, quit. John decided it would now be my job to polish the floors every morning. My previous job was at a movie theater, so working from 5pm to 2am was normal. Mornings? Not my jam. This would require me to be at work by 4am, but I was told this would be for 1-2 to two months tops. I was even thrown a sweet 5 cent raise for my troubles. How could I decline? After a month, I asked John how the search for a replacement is going. He says, probably two weeks and everything will be settled. After month two, I ask again. John says the first person fell through and suggests that maybe I know someone who might be looking for a job. I assure him that is not the case. After the third month, I was completely over it. Again, I approach John and explain that I cannot keep doing this much longer. He replies, not my problem. Find someone else or a new job. This ticked me off, but I wasn't in the position to walk out right then. I figured I'd start applying anywhere I could. A couple of days later, possibly even the same day, my relative drags me with them to go look at new cars. While discussing prices and waiting for the sales manager to respond, me, my relative, and the salesperson were just BSing and I mentioned what John had told me about the job. The salesperson raised an eyebrow and walked away. Moments later, the sales manager approached and said they were looking for a detailer and asked if I was interested. It would be a regular schedule, no evenings, and higher than even my previous theater job as a manager. While my relative was signing financing paperwork, I was filling out a new hire packet. I was to begin work on Tuesday of the next week. When I got home, I packed a bag and began driving to my hometown to visit friends. I knew I wouldn't have to work for about a week because at midnight, I called the grocery store and told them I would not be returning to work. If you have any questions, please ask John. There's nothing keeping retail workers happier than reminding them how replaceable they are or how little you actually care about them and their job. Places like that that aren't afraid to remind you, you really cherish being there. Honestly, people in OP situation probably do appreciate it because it creates a fantastic chance to be the launching point to move on with your life. Our next story is fake vegetarian on flight. Okay, so just to preface this, I'm a cabin crew member, flight attendant. I've been doing it for over 10 years. Any issues that crop up during my workday, I will bend over backwards to accommodate people if I can. However, there are unfortunately a handful of people that are dishonest to try and get what they want. Fake injuries to try and get upgraded. Fake birthdays. You name it. People have tried it, and believe you me, I've had loads of scenarios where people try to cheat the system because it makes them feel special, or that they have one up to me, I guess. Let me tell you about a fake vegetarian I had on board. He was flying an economy, coach, in the second from last row. He wanted the pasta option. I apologized and told him due to popular demand, we had ran out in the middle of the cabin, but we had the chicken option instead if he wanted that. Without skipping a beat, he said, I'm a vegetarian. Last time they brought me a meal from business class, so I'll just wait for that. Now, this is something I would have offered anyway as a nicety, if available, as I'm not too much of a jerk and I genuinely like helping people out if I can. After all, it's a 747, not a 711, as the saying goes. Anyway, the way he just expected it right off the bat before I could even offer a solution left a slightly bad taste in my mouth. And also, I smelled a rat. I was 99% sure that I had cleared in an empty packet of smoky bacon crisps from him earlier on, and no, they weren't a veggie brand as I have the same ones occasionally. I was certain that he was being picky and wanted a higher quality meal. Plus, any regular flyer would know how often we run out of the veggie option and to pre-order a veggie meal. I said, it's unfortunate that he didn't pre-order a vegetarian meal. I'll see what I can do for you though. Just give me five minutes to finish up here. Anyway, I went up to business class. They had also ran out of the veggie option. So I went up to first class and asked if they could spare anything. We ended up putting a few leaves together with a bit of dressing. They spend thousands more up there and can dine at any time, so they didn't want me taking any of the hot veggie options in case someone wanted it later. Fair enough. Then I thought, 
I could probably have some fun with this fake vegetarian. Cue malicious compliance. I brought it back down on a silver tray and held it above his eye line so he couldn't see what it was. I explained that, unfortunately, the vegetarian business class option had run out. Then he went to cut me off so he could complain, but I held up my hand and said, However, I managed to go one step further and I got the last vegetarian meal from first class. Then I pulled the linen cloth off the top of the tray as I placed the salad down in front of him. It was a really basic but large salad, and his face said it all. His face went from a smug, haha, I worked the system, to what the freak is that? Within two thirds of a second flat, he then said, I wanted something hot, I'll just have the chicken then. I put on a shocked face and said, I cannot give you that, sir. I would feel awful. He responded with, Don't worry about it, it's fine. I gave him an, Are you sure you're vegetarian? Look, and brought back the chicken, by which point it had been sat drying up in the oven a little bit longer. Bon appetit. Just to say, even if he was a real vegetarian, he should have pre-ordered. Same goes for gluten-free, vegan, children's meal, diabetic, etc. Anyway, that's my story. Sorry if I rambled a bit. I mean, although OP did get a little bit of their malicious compliance revenge here, ultimately the guy still got what he wanted, even if the chicken was a little bit more cooked, they probably still left feeling some kind of satisfied. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.